Let's look at another example of internal resultant loads. So this question is the exact same um, problem as the previous one, but it's asking us to find the loadings through point D. The previous one was through point C. So now let's look at point D. So once again, we have to start off by finding what this, this distributed load is and where it's located. So what we do is um, W, I'm just going to name it W equals one half base times height. So I just do one half times three meters times three kilonewtons per meter gives me 4.5 kilonewtons. And it's located at the centroid of the triangle, which is one third away from this um, fat base is what I would call it, <laughs> because the the most of the area is located in this area. So it's going to be one third away. So somewhere around oh here. Yeah, one third from the total length of the base. So that's where it's located. So now that we have found our distributed load, I put in my AY and BY, and I want to find BY in this case because we're going to focus on point D. So I pin my beam at point A, and then I just take the moment, this should be MA, sorry, I didn't change it from the last problem. I take it from in reference to point A, so I do BY times 4 meters, and it's positive because it causes a counterclockwise rotation, minus 4.5 times 2, that'll cause a clockwise rotation, and minus 6 times 0.5, that'll also cause a clockwise rotation. So then if we solve through the math, we end up with BY equals 3 kilonewtons, and because it's positive, we know that the way we drew it is correct, so BY is pointing up. So that's what it looks like right there. So the net next step we need to look at is because we want to focus on cutting the beam at point B, we could cut the beam and look at everything to the left or everything to the right. But if we look at everything to the left, it's kind of more complicated because we end up with a load that has like a rectangle and a little triangle in it. So instead I'm going to look at everything to the right because that only has this little triangle right here. So we found the distributed load of this entire triangle by using the base, this base, and this height, right? So we got that to be 4.5. But now we want to find the distributed load caused by this little triangle here that's um, to the right of point D. So what I did is I used proportions. So I did height 1 and base 1. So H1 over B1 equals height 2 over B2. So I just kind of did 3 over 3. And then this is my unknown. And then this is 1.5. So here you can see that. And I got H2 or my height 2, which is this little part, to be 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. So now that allows me to find the load, the net load caused by this little triangle. And that'll be, I called it W2. Once again, 1 half base times height. So 1 half times the 1.5 meters, which is my base, times the height, which is 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. That's this thing right here. And I just found that via my proportion. So W2, my distributed load caused by this little triangle is 1.125 kilonewtons. And once again, we need to figure out where is it located. Um, and we said that uh, for a triangle, it's located one third from this thick base. So it's going to be one third times this total base, 1.5 meters, is 0.5 meters away. So W2 is located here. That's 0.5 meters away from point D, and it is 1.125 kilonewtons. So now that we've found all of our um, loads to the right of point D, so we found BY, we found W2. Now we can move on to cutting the beam at point D and drawing in all of our internal loadings. Now you can draw them anyway. I just drew it like this this and that way you can draw them uh, going the other way doesn't matter you'll end up getting the same answers so I started off with solving for ND so the net forces in the x direction ND is the only force so 
uh, excuse me, that should be a D right there. And D is the only force, so it's zero, zero kilonewtons. Then I went to VD, and I did that by net forces in the Y direction, and once again, this should be D. Uh, ignore the C, I just kept that from the last problem. So I do BY minus W2 minus VD, and I end up with VD equals positive 1.875 kilonewtons. Now, because it's positive, it means that the way we drew it is correct. So I say the magnitude, which is 1.875, down. So that is how you should kind of record your answer instead of using negative signs or positive signs. Now, I'll show you if I had drawn it up initially. I do the net force in the y direction once again. But this time, it's going to be by minus w2 plus vc because it's pointing up, right? So I get vc equals negative 1.875. Because it's negative, it means that the way we drew it should be flipped. So it should be actually pointing down. So once again, I get 1.875 kilonewtons pointing down. So my answer is the exact same here as it was if I had drawn it down initially. Just make sure you're paying attention to the way you draw things and the signs that you get out and what it actually means. Now let's solve for MD. Um, MD, I did the net moment, and I did BY times 1.5 meters, because it's 1.5 meters away from point D, and it causes a counterclockwise rotation, minus W2 times 0.5, because it's 0.5 meters away from point D, and it causes a clockwise rotation, and minus MD, because MD caused a clockwise rotation as well. So I did that, chugged through the math, and I get MD equals 3.94 kilonewtons times meters. And because it's positive, it means that the way we drew it is accurate. And so I just said 3.94 clockwise. Now, if we had drawn it the other way so that um, it's counterclockwise, I do the exact same process. The only thing that changes is this positive sign. Now it becomes positive because it causes a counterclockwise rotation. Once again, I chug through the math and I get MD equals negative 3.94 kilonewtons times meters. Because it came out negative, it means that the way we drew it should be, um, the way we drew it is not the right way, so it should be actually flipped and should be the other way around. So MD equals 3.94 kilonewtons times meters clockwise. So. Now that we've solved for all three of our internal loadings, ND is 0, VD is 1.875 pointing down, and MD is 3.94 clockwise. I highly suggest that every time you write the magnitude and you write the direction instead of involving negative or positive signs because that'll just confuse you. So make sure you're paying attention, attention to details when you're doing these types of problems. Keep in mind how you are drawing your loadings. You can draw them in any random way you want, but as long as you pay attention to signs, you will always come out with the correct final direction and the correct answer.